Well, good morning, Wilmington Apostolic. <laughs> Never fails. Praise the Lord. It's good to be reaching out to each of you this morning for our morning worship service. And uh, it's good to see all of you checking in. I see the names as they're coming up. It's, it's, uh, good healthy thing it is good for us to congregate i will tell you right now that i still am missing church in a big way uh, i love our worship services and and i've become so accustomed to them that i find myself searching youtube for preachers that i like just to just so i could have some real church and uh i just am I'm just missing you and us congregating. So uh, just know that I can't wait for this to be over so that we can come back together. And uh, it's going to be wonderful. Good morning to our Facebook fans, our friends, uh, our co-workers, and those that are joining us. It is so uh, good to have you joining us for our service. And we truly hope that our service is going to minister to you in a way that is spiritually healthy. And uh, we believe God for that. And we can trust God that he's going to take care of his business. And God is making it a point to make you his business. So be encouraged. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a couple of uh, brief announcements. We had our uh, uh, Sunday school and youth Sunday school services this morning at 10 o'clock. Those are working out well. And if your, uh, your children were not in them, let me encourage you uh, to get them in them because the kids are having a lot of fun by uh, Skype and uh, maybe in, in, a, in a future tense, we'll have Zoom working for them and, and uh, they're just going to have a lot of fun. They enjoy interacting. This whole process, especially for the Sunday school age, is new to them. And so uh, because of the newness, they're really, really enjoying it and taking to it. So, so get your children involved there uh, because we want to make sure that they have their church as well. Now, uh, Some of you have been asking me about uh, offerings and so forth, and I can tell you that I have applied for 
a post office box, but as is uh, much going on in this COVID-19 environment, uh, I had to reserve one. And so uh, I'm looking at the cash apps a little more seriously now so that you can take care of your your worship through giving. And uh, I keep saying, I'm hoping to have something by the end of the week that I can come out to you in a positive way. Uh, and so pray in Jesus name. Let's let that be this way. And so, so hopefully that'll be good. Now, um, we've had just, we've had really good feedback coming from you about our, our broadcast and we are working on uh, a different platform for this and we will get out to you in the coming days if we change it uh, we'll make sure you get ample notice but keep an eye on uh, our Facebook page our Wilmington Apostolic Pentecostal Church Facebook page for details and if if we get them together we'll also have a link for you and uh, you'll be able to come in and you'll just be able to click the link and get into where we're going to have our next service. And uh, we're hoping that we can do them simultaneously so that you can choose Facebook or the other uh, app that we'll be using. But uh, in any event, we'll, you'll have a way to, to connect with us. And so now, uh, as we move forward and not to delay, uh, our, our morning worship service, I would like to pray. And I would like you to pray with me. Do me a favor and pray out loud this morning. Pray where you are out loud. We're going to give God glory as is our custom. We're going to act like we're in church. We're going to do what we do when we're in church. So uh, I'm going to lift up holy hands and I'm, I'm that's according to scripture. And I'm going to uh, start worshiping the Lord and I invite you to join me. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now. God, we honor you. We're looking to you today, Lord. We're looking for you to make up the difference in our online broadcast versus being gathered together in our church building. Lord, come into every home. Come through with your word. Minister to the hearts of those that are listening. Help them, Lord. Let your anointing fall for understanding of the word for all that are listening. Open up the hearts of those, Lord, that are in this audience and touch them. Plant your word right in their hearts, Lord, and let it become a part of their foundation so that they can know that their God is caring and loving uh, for them and on them, Lord. And we thank you so much for it. We thank you for it, Lord. Yes, Yes, we pray for your presence here so that even through the recorded message, as some go back to re-listen to it or others come upon it and decide to listen to it, God, we're asking that your anointed presence permeate through to their hearts and we thank you for it. Let them know how much you love them, Lord. And we thank you for it right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we praise your holy name. We lift up your name, Lord Jesus, your name that is above every name. And we say, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the one that reigns supreme in this earth. You rule in the kingdom of men. You are the one that can do all things and who can stop it? And so we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for ministering to our hearts in this environment too, Lord, in the sense that we have no fear. Thank you for that, Lord. Keep us on every side. And we thank you so, for, so much for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, if you would say in Jesus' name at home, you activate that prayer and the anointing of God for you, and you'll have opportunity to, to understand the message that I'm going to bring to you today. And we're going to uh, 
go right into the scripture this morning. And we're going to, I'm going to give you the title first. And the title is going to sound a little, well, I'm going to give you the title. I'm going to give you two titles. You can choose the one you want. The, the, the title of today's message is The Children's Bread. And then I have, or Kingdom Benefits. The Children's Bread or Kingdom Benefits. So we're going to go right to Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 30. This is a, a story that you perhaps, if you're reading the Bible through every year, you've, you've read this scripture. And so I want, to, I want to plumb the depths of this scripture right here. And then I have some confirming scriptures to help you with this passage of scripture and the thought that I have for today. In Mark chapter 7, uh, verse 24 reads this way. After Jesus left there, oh, excuse me, this is the new, uh, the NET, the New English Translation. And, and the verse reads, after Jesus left there, he went to the region of Tyre. When he went into a house, he did not want anyone to know, but he was not able to escape notice. Instead, a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek of Syrophoenician origin. She asked him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be satisfied first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. She answered, yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, because you said this, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. I want to pray one more time. Lord Jesus, God, we need your help here. Help us understand, Lord, this message. All the more, let it permeate our souls, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus, help the speaker do the right thing and speak those things that come from you and your principles and those only, Lord. And I thank you for it. Thank you for it, Lord. Reach for your children today. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Well, the thing that is clear is there's something going on here with this woman, this Syrophoenician woman. She's a Greek. She's not a Jew. But I want you to think about something. Jesus, when he operated in casting out devils, in healing the, the sick, all kinds of diseases, the palsy, blindness, uh, deafness, uh, people that could not speak, and all of those things. It was all within the borders of Israel. That's where he did those things. And so he, in, in, in that respect, he was ministering to the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. I know some people want to contest and say, well, you know, he had woolly hair. He had this. I'm not going there with that. Jesus was a Jew. He was born of a Jewish virgin. Yes. Yes, it is the word of God. And we need to let the word be true. Let, let's, let's let the word be the word. See, I mean, I just may as well confess to you. I believe the word of God. The word of God is my guide. It is my instruction book. What is written in the word that is confirmed out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, I believe it all. I believe all that's confirmed in the word of God. I don't get to choose what I want to believe and then dismiss the things that I don't want to believe. This is the word of God. And so I'm going to believe the word of God. And so when I look at this word and I let it speak to me and I receive its information and where it leans toward instruction, 
I try to wrap my mind around, I need to do that. I need to do what this word says so that I can get the outcome that this word says I will get when I do what it says, because this is the word of God. You know, many times people will talk to you about, you know, I'm seeking the will of God for this. I'm seeking the will of God. And, I'm, and I would say to them, and if you're in this position, I would say this to you. You first must accept the documented will of God. This scripture that we read, this 66 books is the documented will of God. It's what he has preserved for us to, to behold, to digest, to study, to show ourselves approved of him so that we can know how we should conduct ourselves. This word is God's will. Now, if you say, well, I want to know if God is going to, is, is, is God going to, uh, is he okay? Is it his will that I take this job or this profession? Or is it God's will that I marry this man or this woman? Before you can get there, you need to satisfy that you're in the will of God according to his word. That's what I would say. That's, it just, to me, it just makes sense. If, if you were to ask me what my thoughts are, I would say, well, what did you do with the thoughts that I already gave you? Are you giving heed to them? Why are you asking me for more if, you, if you're not even doing what, I, what you already know that I say you should do? What's, what's that about? And so, I mean, God is not like me. And, and God's thoughts are much higher than mine. You know, he's, he's the depth of God is, is awesome. So, so I know that I want to get into his will. And the easiest way to get in his will is to get into his word. And he will lead us and guide us. The Lord is good about that. So when I read this word and the... The uh, title verse uh, for the sermon, The Children's Bread, comes from verse 27. You see, Jesus says to the Syrophoenician woman, this Greek lady, he says, Let the children be satisfied first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. Now, he's not calling her a dog. He's saying that, you know, we have household pets, you know, we have lap dogs, you know, we have the small cuddly dogs, they're a part of who we are, and we treat them special and this and that and the other. But what Jesus is saying is, what's for the children should not be for the pets. You see, he, he's, he's saying that uh, in this, and, and he's using that analogy to say to this Syrophoenician woman, let the children be satisfied first. What children? What children? That's the question. Because he, if he's doing miracles, she's asked him, Lord, cast the demon out of my daughter. And he said, it. listen. Let the children be satisfied first. Let all the problems of Israel be satisfied first. Let me heal and cast out devils to Israel first. They're my children. They're, they're the children of God. They are the documented children of God in the Old Testament. And people that wanted to make it with God had to convert to Judaism. And so there were no other religions that could get in this God, uh, this God's good graces. He said, because he's the only God. He told him, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God. He said, don't go around here flitting around with other gods and doing all this and that. He said, your God is one God. And see, so what he's saying here about the children, let the children be satisfied first. He said, let me take care of the needs of my children first. Now, you you, I have not opened it up so that you could have this right now because I want to give it to the, my children first. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to address the needs of God's children. And I'm a mokosho sababaki. And he said, it's not right to give the children's bread. 
Now see, bread indicates food. It's, it's a nourishment. And so what he's saying is she's asking him to cast out a demon. And he said, that's the food for the children. He's saying this, you know, I know you're in dire straits. I know your daughter is, is, has an unclean spirit and, and you're asking me to address that. Well, let me, I'm going to address it for my children first. I'm going to take care of my children first. And what I'm saying to you is you become a child of God and he's going to address it with you first. You, when you become a child of God, it, he is looking at you and he said, let me help you out first. I'm not going to move my focus off the children. You see, here I'm going to take care of my children. God is a good, good father. And he's been doing this work. And she's heard about the work. I mean, if we were to go back to, uh, uh, let me see what verse this is. Uh, verse 25, it says, instead, a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and came and fell at his feet. Can you imagine what she heard? She heard he can cast out a demon. Oh, oh, that that's not all. She heard that that he had this ability that when he addressed people, when he reached out to people, when he was performing miracles, she heard about that. Not only that, but she believed it. See, she became, she believed that God could do this. That's why she went to him. Oh, she went to him ready. And from the way the scripture is written here, it's, it's very interesting to me. It's almost as if she expected to be rejected by him because she wasn't Jewish. Because she had a ready response. She, there was some forethought that went into that response. You just don't luck up on a response that's going to move God. She had thought, well, he's been doing that over here in Israel. Now he's over here in Tyre. And so, so you know, he can cast out demons. And I'm in dire straits. My poor daughter, my daughter has an unclean spirit. It cannot be fixed by the medical profession. It cannot be fixed by anybody I know. If I had the chance to heal her, I would have healed her already, you see. And Jesus is saying, that's the children's bread, you see. Look at that. In other words, God is saying, I'm ready to work miracles for my children. I'm ready to set the record straight. I'm ready to show myself God. I'm ready to do what only I can do for my children, those that believe in me. But see, this Syrophoenician woman, she came packing belief. <laughs> she said, he's in this area and I'm going, for, I, I'm going to where he is and I'm going to throw myself at his feet and I'm going to ask for mercy that he would have mercy on my daughter and cast out this unclean spirit that is in her. And she, by the time I guess that she would have gotten to him, she already had formulated in her mind how she, what kind of response he might give her. If it was this, okay, well, this, will, if this, then I'm going to say, if this, I'm going to say that. You see, she, it looks like it's calculated by her. Can you see it? She was like, boom. Yes, Lord. But the dogs eat the crumbs from underneath the children's table. She was saying, I don't even mind being a dog. I don't mind being the children's pet if I can just get some crumbs. Mokosho <laughs> sabaki. Ha 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 ha. Mokoya sababa hama. 
<laughs> yeah. How you more koshe saba? See, the Holy Ghost is moving right now because we're in dire straits. We're facing an environment that we've never faced in our lifetime. And just when we thought it was just an old people disease, we're, we now hear that, you know, young people are dying too. It's as sad for the young people as it is for the old people. We, we can't get away from it. It's, it's, a, it's a, an equal opportunity destroyer. Yeah, you see. And so we, have a, we face a situation. Well, now in Delaware, I just recently heard 249 uh, is the count as of uh, uh, recent, today, this morning. And understand this, they're going to the, to the gas station, they're going to the convenience stores, they're going to, they, or at least they have travel, you know, so so we have all this stuff. So now it's we have to worry about who was exposed to the 249. Well, who were they, if they were going to work, who, who exposed them? How did they get it? They didn't get it staying home, that's for sure. And for those of you that have to venture outside your door, you need the covering of Jesus Christ. Without the covering of Jesus Christ, it's, it's not pretty. But because we have the covering of Jesus Christ, he's a game changer. Because we're seeing that God is protecting the children's bread. He's protecting the children's bread. He's got miracles ready for the children. There are miracles ready for the children. And see what happens is, see, the children are already in the category of believers. We're believers. We're already in the category. And see, what got the, the Syrophoenician woman through was that she came believing. She said, it's been reported that he can do this. I believe it. I'm going to him. I'm going to beg for mercy. I'm going to throw myself at his feet. I'm going to make sure he knows, you know, that, that I really need his help with my daughter. I must have her better. I can't help it. I love my daughter and she needs him. She needs him to do this. I want her fixed. I want her whole. I want her functioning well. And she's got an unclean spirit and it's got to go. I'll fall on my knees at his ankles. That's what I'll do. And if he calls me a dog, then I'll be a dog. As long as I can get a crumb. You want to talk about intensity. See, that's intensity. That's caring. And see, when, when Jesus saw that, he said, okay, well done. You know, you got it. And I could just see spiritually him just clicking his finger and telling his guys, go ahead and take care of that. <laughs> because by the time she got home, it was a done deal. Her daughter was laying down in her right mind. She, she was demon free. Demon free. God doesn't have to be right in your presence, right next door to you. He doesn't have to come into the room for him to do what he does when he's feeding the children, when he's feeding the children with the God stuff. Because you see, I want you to understand that what God is doing is he's, he's feeding the spiritual man. He's feeding your spirit. God is a spirit and he's giving you what you need. When, if you receive a miracle from God, you're going to be like, he did it. God did. He actually did this for me. And people won't believe you. Now, they, you know, they, they might not believe you. But you know. And you've received it. And you know that God. You know God did it. You see. That's the thing. God did it. He fed them. He fed you. They were grateful about being uh, healed. They were grateful about being uh, 
free of demon possession, of being able to hear, to see, to speak, you know, to move, to be made whole from leprosy. And, you know, they were grateful. They offered up praise to God for what he had done. This is amazing. It's amazing. And see, it's a principle of God. That's why we're looking at it. You too, you can have this too, if you can just believe. If you come humbly before the throne of grace and believe, you need to navigate your way into the kingdom. You need to get in the kingdom of God and become his children so that he can, he can, you can release him to do these things for you. There were a lot of people demon possessed in Jesus's day that didn't even get healed. Hey, the man at the gate beautiful who was lame from birth. When Peter went through there, according to Acts chapter three, was it three? But yet, yes, I believe it's three. So he was he was there because of his age. I think they said he was 39 years old. Well, he would have been there when Jesus was walking the earth. He didn't get healed during Jesus' day. That's why Jesus left it to his disciples to do more. That's why Jesus wants to multiply his church, multiply his disciples so that his presence could be everywhere. If we can just be humble and do what God says, we, the children of God, then God will use us to do things too because he still wants to heal people. It won't be you or me healing people. It'll be you or I following God's steps, his pattern that he lays out. And then when we do that, then God will release himself into that situation and he will heal them. Hey, I can start naming some names of some people that have been healed. Oh, yes. Of all different kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. You see, healing is for today. Healing is a part of the New Testament church. It is a part. In fact, I, I can just move right now from, from this passage into Mark chapter, uh, let me see, Mark chapter 16. And I'll just start at verse 14. You don't even have to turn there, but I'm going to uh, read 14 to 20. And I'll just emphasize along the way so that I can get, get, get a summary. So I can show you what how it's backed up in the scripture. So I can give you another witness about it. And so in Mark chapter 16, starting at verse 14, this is after Jesus has risen from the dead. Verse 14 of chapter 16 says, Then he appeared to the eleven themselves. To the eleven. See, it was twelve when Judas was in the number. But Judas is gone. He's dead now. He killed himself. He committed suicide. So it's only eleven. So then he appeared to the eleven themselves while they were eating. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him resurrected. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. Notice, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Belief requires action. The Syrophoenician woman believed and threw herself at Jesus' feet and submitted her request. She believed and she acted. See, there's no such thing as belief and no action. It doesn't work that way with God. You have to show for you have to show forth works with your faith. And they're not your works that get you saved. God's work gets you saved. But you have to show that you believe. Your behaviors have to show it. And so Jesus is saying, he that believeth and is baptized. See, the baptism part is showing the work 
that, that lets God know you believe. It's not just lip service. But the one who does not believe, that's like saying the one who will not be baptized will be condemned. Moving on, 17 says, these signs, here we go, now we're talking about the children's bread. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. There you go, right there. In my name, this is the New English translation. Uh, in the King James Version, it says, they will cast out devils, you see. They will speak in new languages. So for all of those people who say, well, you don't need to speak in tongues to know you have the Holy Ghost. Well, it says here that all the believers are going to speak in new languages. You can say what you say, but see, I've got to go with the scripture. And so see, this is getting confirmed for you. You see, she had works with her belief. And we need to have works with our belief, and it activates the bread for the children. You say, well, how come this isn't happening more? Well, let's see how many people are doing this. How many people are showing works with their belief? Come on now. How many people are, are being humble and, and willing to throw themselves at Jesus' feet and just hang on his every word and do what he says? How many? How many? How many? There's your answer. That's why you don't see it on a mass scale. And Christians, you know, brothers and sisters, won't humble themselves before the Lord. They won't do what the Syrophoenician woman said. And they can't get what she got. She got the bread designed for the children. But there are people that are in such dire need and they... Let's say they have never heard this before and they don't understand it, and, but they know that they're reaching out to God. They are at least falling at his feet in humility, spiritually, and getting their request. You see, it's for the children, but the Lord is showing us outside the kingdom, beyond the children. There are those that are willing to believe what I can do. This is what the Lord is saying. They believe what I can do, and I don't have a person to talk to them, to show them. They don't know anything about my gospel. Let me take care of them anyway. You see, that, that that's Jesus. But in the Christian church, we should see this all the time. It should be regular that people are getting healed in services. Regular. Because it's the children's bread. And it'll strengthen you spiritually when God heals you like only he can heal you. Verse 18 says they will pick up snakes with their hands. That, well, <laughs> I'm not going to try to pick up any snakes. But uh, anyway, let me move on. And what, whatever poison they drink will not harm them. They will place their hands on the sick and they sh will be well. So. You know, these things, these are the signs and the miracles that come with believing when you're in the kingdom of God. These are the things that are happening. And then the Bible says, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. And they, they, the apostles, they went out and proclaimed everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through the accompanying signs. You see, there's a witness. It's not the only witness. In Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 4, I'm just going to give you two more. Hang in there with me. I'm almost finished. Acts chapter 8, verse 4 says, Now those who had been forced to scatter went around proclaiming the good news of the word. Philip went down to the main city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. The crowds were paying attention with one mind to what Philip said as they heard and saw the miraculous signs he was performing. See, Philip was humble. He was doing what the Lord said. He was confirming. He was uh, speaking the word, sharing the gospel. And he had to be preaching miracles because it says 
and they heard and they heard about it and they saw the miraculous signs he was performing. They heard him speak about it and they saw what he was doing. Because he believed, he went and laid hands on somebody. He laid hands on somebody. He touched somebody. He prayed with somebody. Say, Lord, take this away from him. You see. For unclean spirits crying with loud shrieks were coming out of many who were possessed. See that? Here it is with the casting out of devils again. Unclean spirits. He was casting out devils. And many paralyzed and lame people were healed. There's the healing. So there was great joy in that city. Now I skip on down to, uh, skip to verse 12 and it says, but when they believed Philip, as he was proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. See, that's what he was doing. Proclaiming the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They began to be baptized, both men and women, because he preached baptism to them. They wouldn't have known to get baptized if he didn't tell them to get baptized. Because Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Verse 14 says that uh, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. You see, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get through the other examples, I can tell you. Because it, this, it's going to make this message too long. But let me assure you that where it says here in verse 14 of Acts chapter 8, that Samaria, the apostles that were in, they were in Jerusalem, they were south. Samaria was north of them. And they heard that Samaria had accepted, had received the word of God. Most people say, well, when you receive the word of God, you know you're saved. Well, how do you know you received it? How, where's your behavior that show you received the word of God? See, when they accepted the word of God, you, you see, they were baptized. And uh, the Bible says here that when Jerusalem heard that Samaria accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. These two went down and prayed for them so that they would receive the Holy Spirit. Because, see, they have to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Come on now. You have to be born of the water and of the Spirit. For the Spirit, excuse me, verse 16 says, For the Spirit had not yet come upon them. They had accepted the Word of God. They had been baptized in the name of Jesus. They were submerged in water in the name of Jesus and brought up. And yet, they knew that they had not received the Holy Spirit. It says in verse 16 of Acts chapter 8, For the Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they had been born of the water, but not born of the Spirit. How did they know? Because they didn't hear them speaking in those new languages. They didn't hear them speaking in that new language, that language that they were not taught. That they, when they raised their hands and started praising God, you know, the word is nigh you, even in your mouth. This is the word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now here's confession for you. Lord, I thank you so much. You see, you have to confess with your mouth. You have to speak. God, I give you praise and worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Romans 10 and 9, Paul is telling them how they received the Holy Ghost. They already knew that because it was the Roman church. But for you and I, he's telling us how to receive the Holy Spirit. The word is nigh you even in your mouth. This is the word of faith that we preach. This is the belief system that we believe because there must be new languages. Mo koshe sabah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. That's a confession. Thank you, Lord. God, you're a great God. That's confession. God, 
I need you in my life. I love you, Lord. And you keep confessing till the new languages come. Hey, I don't apologize for being apostolic Pentecostal. I'm an apostolic Pentecostal pastor. I'm an apostolic Pentecostal teacher. I'm an apostolic Pentecostal preacher. And the church that I pastor is an apostolic Pentecostal church. The members of our church are apostolic Pentecostal in their belief system because we believe this. This belief that I'm explaining to you now, the believing of working of miracles, the children's bread, is an apostolic belief. This belief is, just, is this is not going to be preached in any other church. It's preached in this church. It's preached in the apostolic church. Because this is what the, the, the apostles taught. This is how they did it. This is what they said because they wanted you and I to have power with the Lord. They wanted us to be movers and shakers in God's kingdom, to be able to push devils off of people, to, to be able to not have the gates of hell prevail against us. God set us up to be winners. He did not set us up to be victims. We are not victims. We're supposed to be victorious. We're supposed to be victors. We're not supposed to be victims. You experiencing something? There's dire need in your life. You need to reach up into heaven and pull down your miracle in the name of Jesus Christ because of how you believe. You need to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. You need to lay on your face before the Lord on an altar of God and say, God, I'm waiting on you to move in my situation. This is the children's bread. This is what builds the children up spiritually. This is what makes us stronger. This is what helps us be more mature. This is what causes us to be able to be victorious, even in COVID-19 environments. Ah, hallelujah. God's not letting me go on this message. He's not letting me go. He, he wants you to understand that this is protocol in the kingdom. This is a kingdom benefit. This is kingdom oriented. This is how it goes. This is how it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. You're not supposed to be running from a devil. You're supposed to square up on a devil and rebuke him in the name of Jesus. That's what you do. You do that. You do that. Hallelujah. Do it in the name of Jesus. Don't do it in the name of you. Do it in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, it'll work. It'll work. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Verse 17 said, Then Peter and John placed their hands on the Samaritans, and, and they received the Holy Spirit. They knew. They could hear. They understood the new languages. They could They could. They could see it. It just happened. You know, they, now where they could say, you know, I could just imagine the people in Jerusalem hearing about uh, the Samaritans receiving the word of God and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and God working miracles all amongst them. And I could hear them saying, did they get the Holy Ghost? Have you heard them speak in tongues yet? And no. Okay, well, Peter, John, Go up to Samaria. Pray them through to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let them get the full boat, not a half boat. Not, not, get them out of the, the spiritual incubator. They've only been baptized in Jesus' name. Go make sure they're born of the Spirit. And that's what happened. Please note in verse 16 where they said, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were water baptized, right? Philip did it right. Philip did what he was supposed to do. It was, he was all by himself there. 
There was nobody else with them. Not like when Paul traveled or when Peter traveled and they had their protégés and all of that. And there were some people and they could agree together, you know, where two or three agree on earth as touching anything that they desire before the Lord. God is going to be in the midst and God is going to give it to them. But see, Philip was by himself. We don't see a report that Philip was with somebody else. It said Philip went to Samaria and, and preached Jesus unto them. He worked all the miracles. He, you know, he, 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 he preached to the people in such a way about the good news that they received it. And see, this is what this pastor wants for you. He wants you to receive it too. He wants you to receive it. You see, this is not just for a select few. This is the order of the kingdom. This is kingdom benefits. This is the children's bread. This will build you up spiritually. By the time God sets you up, mm, I say it like this all the time. I said, you know what? When, when new people are coming into the church and they're getting baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, I said, now give God a year to teach you. Give him a good dedicated year. Attend every service. Yeah. Get in a Bible study also. Here, start reading the Bible through and we give him a Bible chart. And then I would say, uh, make sure you're praying every day before you read or after you read the word of God. Make sure you're praying. You know, give God a year. Cast your care upon him because he cares for you. You're a newborn baby in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God starts taking care of them. By the time that year is over, they've got testimony after testimony after testimony how God came to their rescue in these situations as they changed their behaviors in areas. And then it looked like the devil was coming in on them, but God came to the rescue. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ is my champion. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, he can get it done. His arm is not short that he cannot save. His, his fingers are not arthritic that he cannot reach out and deliver you. You see, this God is awesome. He's awesome and he's worthy to be believed. Hallelujah. I get this. My cushion, your little side. I feel the presence of God so strongly. And I know that if your heart is open, you're feeling the presence of God too. I have given you truth according to the word of God. I backed it up with principle, with Jesus, what Jesus had to say in Mark 16 and what happened in Acts chapter 8 with Philip. I could give you Acts chapter 19 too. I mean, I can just give, give it, I can give you all this stuff. I'm telling you, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to go through the Acts chapter 11 part, uh, Acts chapter 19 part, but I will tell you the scripture. This is your homework. Do this as a devotional tomorrow or Tuesday, but please do it. Go to Acts chapter 19 and read. I want you to, would want you to read all the way up to verse 20. But in particular, to back up this message, look at 19 to 20. Excuse me, 11 to 20. You go read 11 to 20. And the first thing it's going to tell you is that Paul was working many miracles on behalf of God. You know, here it is again. Somebody that believes. Somebody that's taking action. Somebody that's doing it. That God is no respecter of persons. We have the same spirit in us that Paul had. God is not limiting us. And I'm speaking in particular to those that may be a little bit fearful about the environment we're in, or you're compromised, or, you know, you're in the sense of your finances, your residence, your transportation, your career, all those are earthy things. But God so easily fixes them because he wants to move on to the spiritual things for you. 
He'll, he'll deliver you out of all of that stuff right there. You know, just follow his principles. If you want your career tightened up, if you want the, you, you know, you cast your care and God is going to give you the Bible that tells you how to do that. He'll send some person to you and he'll, he'll, he'll have them speak to you. It doesn't have to be me. It can be somebody else with truth. They do have to have the Holy Ghost and be baptized in Jesus' name. Because otherwise, I don't even know how they can decipher the scripture. You see, this that I'm speaking to you is for everyone, not a select few. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow you if you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, oh my goodness. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. I just, if we were in church, man, I'd, I'd lay out on the altar and, or I'd find a, some open floor space because there may not be room at the altar because you, Wilmington Apostolic, fill that altar. You're good about that. And I'm praying for to God, make you what I've described here. Yes, full measure. There's more growth to be had more growth. I want everybody, I want every church member that you say you believe, I want you working miracles for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I do. I promise you, I won't be jealous. I won't be. I'll be Holy Ghost proud, pride, prideful, <coughs> excuse me, to the extent that it couldn't be a sin. <coughs> You see, that's that's what I would want. I, I, I want you empowered by the Lord. Hallelujah. Use them, Lord, for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for those that have listened this long to this broadcast, God, affect them and bring them closer to you, Lord. And God, let them Receive truth in your name, Lord Jesus. Yes, God, and we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed. This is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. The Bible says uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see, to the Jew and to the Gentile. We're living in the church age. And I'm saying to you that this is the way we're having church now. How about not missing a service? How about showing up again at 6 p.m. tonight so that we can get into the meat of the word? This is the milk of the word. But show up at 6 p.m. tonight to get the meat of the word. And then show up for midweek Bible study on Wednesday at 7.30 so that you can be taught the word. I, I promise you, this past Wednesday I preached. I just felt it in the Holy Ghost. But I do want to teach. Because I want you to be able to get it in such a way that it can't be taken away from you. And see, what I've taught you today, it can't be taken away from you. It's confirmed in the scripture. You've heard it. Amen. Now, Lord, as we close our service, God, be gracious to every one of us. You've been gracious. But God, light your spirit upon us all and allow us to walk with you for the rest of this day, Lord. And we thank you for it, Lord. Steer us in the right direction. Stay the, the advances of the enemy toward us, Lord. Keep us protected and safe. And we thank you so much for it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. 
If you said in Jesus' name, say amen, which means so be it. God bless you. We'll be back at 6 p.m. tonight for our evening worship service and again at 7.30 on Wednesday for our midweek Bible study. God bless you until I see you again. Goodbye now.